Do you lack motivation to keep getting into the gym? Do you lack structure with your fitness routine? Do you keep doing the same thing over and over again and, and getting the same exact result? If that sounds like you, then I want you guys to make sure that you go check out my brand new revamped 10 week program because so many people struggle with a lack of motivation. They struggle with a lack of structure, but we make sure that we start off the program by getting very clear on what is the exact goal that you want to achieve. Then we determine the strategy. We determine the two or the three things that are the most important things that you need to do every single week in order to achieve that goal. And then I help you hold you accountable every single week, week after week to make sure you're actually making progress. Like I don't let my clients go more than a few weeks if they're not continuing to make progress to their goals. So make sure you guys check out my brand new 10 week program at nickcarrier.com slash 10 week programs. Again, nickcarrier.com slash 10 week programs. That way you can go from a lack of motivation to being able to jump out of bed every single morning. Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to another Fitness School Friday. I'm super pumped that you're spending the time with me today because you're somebody who wants to take action. You're somebody who wants to get closer to their fitness goal. You're somebody who's actually serious about it because so many people set goals and then they don't really, they're not like that high stakes of them. They're not that important to them. But you're somebody, if you're, if you're spending the time listening to this, you really want to achieve your goal. So I want you to pat yourself on the back for that initially. So next week or last week we talked about the three questions that you need to answer before actually setting your fitness goal and starting towards your fitness goal. And the first one was, you need to ask yourself why you're doing it. And I used to think that asking yourself why was kind of hokey, but the reason why it's so important is because when you run into challenges and setbacks and frustrations, when you remember why, it can motivate you to stay on course and to keep taking action. The second one was, what's the target that I'm trying to hit? Because so many people set goals as a concept and they don't transfer them into a target. And then the third one you have to ask yourself is, is this worthy and winnable. This is something that's meaningful to me, but it's, I also truly believe that I can win at this game. I believe that I can be successful. So that was last week. If you feel like you missed that and you would get something from it, make sure that you go back and listen to it. But this week, I want to talk about something that honestly fires me up more than almost anything in regards to our fitness because it's such a mental aspect of fitness. And I say it a lot of times when I'm when I'm, when I'm coaching classes. So if you've ever taken one of my fitness classes, then you've probably heard me say this. And, and the, I say this, don't convince yourself that you're incapable of something that you're fully capable of. Again, don't convince yourself that you're incapable of something that you're fully capable of. And, and I have a, I was on the treadmill one time. So back at the beginning of 2020, when I first started my first attempt to try to, try to get closer to a sub five minute mile. And I'm gonna attempt that again here in a couple months. I haven't told anybody that yet, but I'm gonna attack it here in a couple months again. But anyways, I was on a tread, running on a treadmill, training to for my sub five minute mile goal. And I'll never forget, like I, I set my plan before going into it. And I was going to run at, I think it was nine miles per hour for, or no, it was, I was gonna run at nine and a half miles per hour for six minutes, at 10 miles per hour for six minutes and 10 and a half miles per hour. For six minutes. I was going to do that on the treadmill. So a total of 18 minutes. I set that plan. I think the night before I went to the gym, I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. And then I'll, I'll never forget the first nine and a half miles per hour for six minutes. It was, you know, it wasn't too, too terribly bad. And, but then I, I got like halfway, like three minutes into to 10 miles per hour. And I was like, holy crap, this sucks. Like there's no way I'm going to be able to hold on to this for three more minutes and be able to hold on to 10 and a half miles per hour for an additional six minutes. I was like, all right, I guess I'm gonna have to change my strategy here. I'm gonna back down and stuff like that. And then, and then, that's when I realized I was like, "Hang on, no, Nick, like, no, don't fall victim to that voice in my head that's trying to convince myself that I'm incapable of doing something that, like, the former version of me, the 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 last night version of me, believed that I actually was capable of." See, I think we have a better perspective prior to going into a tough situation. We have better perspective on what we're actually capable of. So I, I had a pretty good perspective that I, I think I can actually do this plan. Like I, I created the plan thinking that I could do it. But then when I got into the thick of it and it was tough and it was challenging and I felt uncomfortable, that's when that subconscious mind started to convince myself that maybe I can't actually do it. But that's because I'm uncomfortable. And so I've seen this a lot of times with my clients, but that's when it really sunk in for me. I was like, oh my gosh, if I'm convincing myself I'm incapable of something that I actually am capable of. Other people must be doing this all the time. And that's when I was like, oh my gosh, I'm seeing this in this class, in this class, with this client, with this client. And I, I remember a few weeks back, I was watching 
uh, somebody in my Orange Theory class do ab dolly knee tucks. When you have your hands on the ground, your your toes on the ab dolly, and you're bringing your knees in. And and this girl started doing it with her knees on the ab dolly instead of her toes, which is kind of the option or the the modification of the exercise, if you will. And I went over there, or I saw her, I was like, I think she can do it on her toes. Like, I think she's strong enough. I think she can do it. So I went over and asked, I was like, have you tried it on your toes yet? And she was like, no. I was like, I, th- I think you can do it. Give yourself a try. And then I, I watched her do it and she completed it successfully. And I was like, hell yeah, I love it. And, and I realized that she has just been so used to in the past. She's just always gone to her knees with the ab dolly. So she hadn't tried anything new. So over time, she had just kind of convinced herself over and over and over and over again that she isn't capable of doing that particular thing. And, and I see the same thing with people doing push-ups. Like a lot of times, some people will just always go to their knees for push-ups because that's what they've always done. But they've never actually tried something. They've never tried push-ups on their toes. They haven't tried push-ups on their toes in a long time. And maybe they built up the strength to where they're actually capable of it. So you see they're convincing themselves they're incapable of something that they actually might be capable of doing. And then a, a third story is I have a, a client who all oftentimes he struggles with balance. And so when there was a single leg deadlift, and that could sometimes be a tough exercise to find balance in, she immediately went for the TRX strap to hold onto the handles to get a, get a bit of a little support as she did the exercise, which is, a, which is fine. That's a great modification. And a lot of times you need to do that if you struggle with balance. But I had seen her do that over and over and over again over the last few weeks. And I went over and I was like, let's try it without the TRX this time. Let's try it without, without having a little bit of support. And sure enough, she tried it and she was able to do it. It wasn't perfect. No, like she, she stumbled a couple reps. But the point is we convince ourselves that we're incapable of things that we're fully capable of, especially when it's something a little bit new or maybe when we're in the thick of a challenging situation. I see it all the time on, on, tre- on treadmills. Like people will back down their speed when they're halfway into an effort or towards the end of an effort because they're really uncomfortable and they're convincing themselves that they're incapable of holding on to the speed that they're that they actually had a little bit better perspective like going into the interval going into like a two minute interval they probably had pretty good perspective on what they were able to hold on to but then a minute in or 90 seconds in because they're uncomfortable they back off and this can apply to so many things with fitness but so many things in life as well like don't convince yourself you're incapable of getting that new job and and then you don't apply like don't convince yourself that you can't pick up the 25 pounds because you've always picked up 20 pounds. Actually give it a try. Actually give it a go. If you are in, in, a, in a meeting and there's 10 people in the meeting, don't convince yourself that you're incapable of bringing good value and, and bringing a good idea to the meeting just because you've never done it before or just maybe because it's a heated, a heated topic. Like, Don't convince yourself you're incapable of something that you are fully capable of. We have this weird thing in our subconscious mind that we can sometimes think less of ourselves and think less of our own abilities or or less of our own knowledge when we're in a challenging situation. So if this this applies to you, if you feel like you're convincing yourself, maybe you're incapable of something that you're less than, that you're not worthy, like stop it. Stop it right now. Like that, just saying stop it doesn't make it easy, right? It's still easier said than done. Like I still hold myself back. A decent amount and, and I try to break through that but I just want you to be more aware of it and when you're more aware of it you be like oh <laughs> like I actually might just be convincing myself of this but like I actually might be capable of it so I hope you guys I hope you guys got something from from this and I hope you can start to apply it to get closer to your fitness goals because oftentimes when you want to get closer to your go- to a goal you have to do things you have to be willing to do things that you haven't done in the past and in order to do to be willing to do things that you haven't done in the past, you can't convince yourself that you're incapable of the new thing, right? So it's so important to, to, to have this right mindset.